So I was planning to do a video today about the register file board that I built for SPAN1, which is this board at the bottom here, that top board to display board. Um, but instead, I decided to do a video on the chip I've used for this register file. And the register file as a whole is a triple port um, four by eight byte register file. This chip here, the 74HCT670, is a four by four um, latch. It says it's a register file on the data sheet. Let's take a quick look at that in a minute. So here's the data sheet. Let me just zoom in on that a second. Okay, what you can see here is there's four bits in, four bits out. There's a write enable, a read enable, two bits addressing the uh, register inside here that's going to get written and two bits addressing which of those four registers is going to appear on the output. If read enable is high, then this is a high impedance. The outputs are at high impedance. Um, and it, it turns out these are latches. So if, write, if it's write enables enabled and read enables enabled and the write and read addresses are set to the same location, then this just operates as a transparent latch as the input changes, the output changes as well. Now the write address and the read address are independent. So I can be writing to any one of the four registers and simultaneously reading from any one of the four registers, including the one that's actually being written to. Inside, zoom out. So this is what's inside. There's um, 16 latches arranged in banks of four, one for each of the possible write addresses. There's a bit of kind of complicated logic here on the output to select which latch is going to get read. And then there's the tri-state, which uh, is driven off the read enable bit. So I've used four of these chips in my register file and I've arranged them in a, a setup that gives me um, eight bits in and two ports on the output each eight bits. So there's a four, it's a four by eight bit triple port register file. But let's take a quick look at the 74HCT670 in action. Let's get rid of this. Okay. So I have no idea whether these tubes um, really provide any protection. But let's get one of these chips out. And I also have no idea how you tell whether these chips have seen service um, before. The legs look a little bit soldered, so perhaps it has, but they're so clean. Now let's just pop that in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll wire this up um, with the outputs attached to this LED array here. There's a common cathode and the uh, outputs are tied to, to zero volts through this uh, resistor array, which reduces a bit of the wiring effort. So here it is wired up. I'm not going to turn it on because I did that a moment ago and I noticed that all four of these lights came on. That's the Q output. They should not have been on because I've got the D input set low. I've got a read and write enabled and I'm addressing uh, register zero. So if these are low, it should have been in that um, flow through mode, transparent latch. That should, they should have been off. And then I noticed that the chip was incredibly hot. That's generally a bad thing for any, any device. And then I realized that I'd wired up ground to five volts and current was probably flowing backwards through some components. Yeah, not a, not a, not a great experience for the chip and it stopped working. So clearly I've fried that, let's get it out. Um, luckily I've got some replacements. Let's pop him in. There we are, get in there. Right. Now, as I said, read and write enabled. Data going in is zero. Register zero is being addressed on the read and the write. Turn it on, nothing lights up. If I bring a bit high, then that bit comes on. So because read and write are both enabled and I'm addressing the same register for read and write, then it's in a transparent latch mode. So if I bring them all high, you can see they will light up. 
Now, if I take the right enable pin low, or high rather, to disable right, now I can move these around with impunity, nothing changes. Let's change the, uh, the right address. Let's go to register three. And let me set the pattern on that to be something recognizable, two bits high, two bits low. And let's pulse right low. Okay, so that didn't change because of course I'm currently reading register zero still. So if I flick the read address up to three, there we are, one on, one on, two on, two off. And if I put the read address back to register zero, there's the previous bit pattern we had. So that's the, the 74HCT670 register file, not baking hot. There's one other thing, this, is, this LED array I've got here, I think I'm using a 180 ohm resistor array. And I noticed that actually they work pretty well with much higher values of resistor. So um, here I've got a 4.7K resistor array. Let me just switch it out. Let's just see how bright it is. Let me just zoom in on that a second. Okay, so here it is again. And um, we've got the two bits on the left here being driven by the high output of the 74HCT670 through a 180 ohm resistor. And we've got the right two bits being driven through a 4.7K resistor. And they're pretty decently bright, these. Let me just do the same thing with the 10K over here and see what we get. Okay, so that's the 10K and yeah, it's quite a lot dimmer. But actually, I think the 4.7K is pretty good. Something like a 2K even in there would be pretty good. So, you know, just because you've got some LEDs in there doesn't mean you have to pile loads of current through them. So with the 4.7K, what, would have been just over a milliamp or something? Let's work out the voltages on that to see what the um, forward voltage on that diode is actually going to be. I suppose rather than guess, I could actually just measure it, couldn't I? Let's put the multimeter there. I've got it in diode mode. Let's hook up one of the LEDs across it. And you can see it's lighting at 1.77 volts. Can we just think about the current there a second? So I was just curious, what current is going through that? Um, there's a forward voltage, 1.7. If I, with a 1.7 forward voltage on this and a five volt supply rail, that su suggests to me that there's like less than a milliamp going through there, Le um, probably something like about 0.7. Um, so it lights up pretty brightly with 0.7 milliamps going through it. Let me just double check that because what I can do is I can measure the voltage across this 4.7 K resistor and then we can work out the current going through that. I've got this wire here tied to the, um, the cathode of the LED, which is the north side of that resistor there. Let me just check the voltage across it. All right, you can't see that, let me bring that in. Okay, let's hook that up again. Okay. So 3.1 volts, 3.2 volts. I wonder what I'm actually getting out of my power supply. Let's just take a look at what's actually coming in. Okay. So five volts, pretty spot on. Okay, so if, um, that's not far off. So if that's a 1.7 or 1.8 um, voltage drop on the LED, 3.3 or something like that's about right. If we do the quick calculation, So if you want to know the current across that, current through that um, uh, resistor there, it's, uh, well, it's five, well, actually, what did we get? We've got about 3.3 volts, something like that. 3.3 volts over 4.7K, which if I stick it through my calculator, gives something like 0 0.00072 um, amps, which is what? 0.72 milliamps. Okay, so yeah, impressively efficient little LEDs, aren't they really? Don't use as much power as I actually thought. I seem to, I'm, I'm probably stuck in the 80s when the LEDs just, LEDs just chewed power. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting.
the 74HCT670 buried in there amongst that little rat's nest of wires. I'm, I'm using four of those and yeah, they, they seem to be working pretty well. I'll do another video about how I've actually used them here in the register file. There's a little bit of complexity in how this is wired up. Um, four of them, as I say, for a triple port, four by eight bit register file.